It's not easy to get a good sear on a skinless chicken breast. If you use too high a temperature, the sear looks fine, but the meat is raw inside. If you use too low a temperature, the sear looks fine, but the meat is completely dry on the inside. So there's only a very small window of temperature and time where the breast becomes perfect. We tested on more than 15 chicken breasts to find the perfect combination of temperature and time. We also tested with both oil and butter and we found that butter is by far the best. The protein in the butter darkens and sticks to the chicken breast that gives a darker and more flavorful crust. If you only fry in oil, the meat doesn't brown as easily. And if we want to get a good crust in such a short amount of time, we must fry at the highest possible temperature where the butter doesn't burn. We also tested how long butter can fry at different temperatures before it burns. And we found an interesting result. The rule of thumb with butter is that you can cook around 10 minutes at 170 degrees before it starts to burn. If you go up 10 degrees, you have 5 minutes. If you go down 10 degrees, you have 20 minutes. So there's a doubling and a halving in time for every 10 degrees you go down or up in temperature until the butter is burned. So we got to find the best combination of temperature and time where we can fry in butter for the best flavor, while also getting a good crust with tender meat on the inside. A good sear requires a high temperature for a short time. But juicy meat requires a low temperature and a long time. And we found that six minutes on each side at 170 degrees is the best combination for cooking in butter. That is for the most common sized chicken breast of 200 grams. Add the butter at 140 degrees this will allow the water to evaporate without it splattering. Then turn the temperature up to 170 degrees. This temperature is high enough for a sear, but it's still low enough for a juicy middle. Season the chicken with salt and paprika. Cook for 6 minutes on the first side. The butter won't burn and you will achieve a delicious butter cooked flavor. Then cook for 6 minutes on the other side. But if the breast is large, then give it a few more minutes on the other side. If you're unsure how large your chicken breast is, then you can insert a thermometer on the thickest sides and when it reaches 55 degrees, it's done. Be aware, the breast must rest for at least 5 to 10 minutes before it's finished. But sous is the most reliable method where you can achieve tender meat through long cooking at low temperature. And if you want to go that route, you should sous vide your breast at 58 degrees for two and a half hour. And then quickly brown it in oil and butter at 190 degrees for one and a half minutes on each side. 